Hi second graders, today is Monday, April 20th. Today you get to play a really fun math game called Perfect 500. This is probably one of my most favorite math games we play all year. Let me show you how to play. All right, now normally in the classroom we'll be playing with our partners or a small table group. So it says to have a number of players of two or three. You can play this game by yourself and just try to continue beating your score, or you can play with an older sibling or parent. Okay, first, you wanna cut out the number cards. There's two pages of them. Make sure you cut each page individually so you don't cut over the number. Uh, cut out all the number tiles, and then place them face down so you can't see them. Spread them all out. Okay, now the object of this game is that we want to try, we're gonna be playing in five rounds. These number tiles are going to be used to help you create two two-digit numbers and you wanna to try to make those two two-digit numbers equal as close to 100 as you can. Because after you play five rounds, you want your total, the sum of all five of these rounds to be as close to 500 as possible. For example, I'm gonna play maybe a couple rounds with you. All right, so first you wanna take five tile cards. Even though you're only gonna use four of them to make your two digit numbers, you have an, an extra one as like an option. Okay, so I'm gonna flip these cards over. An eight, a one, a three, a three, a nine. Okay, so we're working with place value still, and we're trying to figure out what arrangement could I put these numbers in? Like for example, 93 and 13, could I add these up? to get me as close to 100 as possible. Okay, let me think. Well, I know that nine tens and one 10 is equal to 100, that's really close. And three ones and three ones is six, so that would be 106. That's pretty close to 100. Can I get closer though? Let's see. What if I tried 39 and 81? Eight tens and three tens is 11. 110. Oh, that'd be 120. That's way too much. Okay. No, that's not going to work. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Maybe keep out the eight and put in. Hmm. It's 93 and 13. I still like that option the best. Is there another one that can get closer? 81 and 33, did I try that already? No, let's see, 93, 39, four, let's see, 30, 60, that'd be 70, eh, 106 was closer. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna stick with my, what do I have, 93 and 13? 93 and 13, that would make it, so 90 and uh, nine tens and one 10 is 100, three ones and three ones is six, so 106. Okay, so I would write for round one, after fiddling around with my, with my cards and adding up my tens place and trying to figure out my ones, I think this is the best arrangement for me to get as close to 100 as possible for this round. Each round's gonna be a little different because you're gonna have different number cards. So I'm gonna write 93 plus 13 on my worksheet. 93 plus 13, I said it's 100. Whoa. Oopsie, and six, it's hard to write and record, eek. Okay, 106, all right. Now, the, the tile, the numbered tile that I did not use, the eight, is going to stay for the next round. The other ones get pushed aside, and I'm gonna pull out four more cards. All right, what do I have? An eight, a four, a six, oh boy, there's some big numbers, and a two. Okay, that helps. Let's see. Hmm, well, right away I see six and four, and I know that makes 10. If I put those in my hundreds place, that is, so if I had like a zero and a zero, that would be a hundred right there. I have a two and I have an eight. That's gonna make a 10, that'd be 110. 
Okay, it's not bad. Let's see if I can get closer. Let's see, could I do, hmm, 82 and 46? Oh, that's four tens and eight tens. That's already 120. That's too much. Hmm, how about 48? That's close to 50 and 62. Did I have it the first time? I think I had it the other way around. Hmm, okay. 80, 80 and 20. Oh, eight and two, that makes 10 also. What if I had, let's see, 84 and 26? That would be 100. And 10. Okay, now I'm getting confused about what I had the first time, but I remember having 110. I think that's as small as I can go. So, all right, I'm a little over. Okay, now here's another strategy. So if I choose to have 110 for this round, and I went over 100 a little bit on the last round, 106, that's gonna have me, let's see if I add this on here, 26. plus 84 equals 130. Oh, wait a minute, I said 110. No, it's 110. <laughs> Eight tens plus two tens is 100, plus six and four is another 10, 110. All right, plus 110. Okay, looking at this right now, if I had 100 for each round, I should be at around 200 to keep me on track to getting close to 500 in the end. Right now, I'm 16 over, so I have 216 if I were to add these up, which means my next round, if I only come up with 80 something, that would be pretty good. So looking at maybe for the first round, your total was like 80 something. That means your second round, you can go over 100 by a little bit and it's on, it's gonna balance out. So that's a strategy that you can think about when you're playing this game. Now, just so you know, the directions do say to have one deck of 40 cards, which would be four of the sheets that we gave you guys all together. We only gave you two to try to save some paper. So if you wanted to play with another person, what you can do is take turns with these cards here. These are a perfect amount of cards that you need for one person to play all five rounds. If you wanted to play with another person, you can make your own cards or copy the pages before you cut them um, to create the extra cards that this is calling for, but you don't have to do that. If you play by yourself, what you have in your packet is, per is a perfect amount for you to use. All right, um, what else? Let's see, I'm going over these directions. You wanna arrange the two numbers that they add up to a sum as close to 100 as possible. You're going to have one left over for the next round. So remember how I had one card, had an eight left over in the first round? I saved that one and then I pulled four more cards. By the very end, you're gonna have the perfect amount. You won't have anything left over. All right, so you wanna record your addition problem on the recording sheet um, for the second round you push away you discard the first four cards that you use that's what you saw me do and then you get four more cards let's see at the end of the five rounds each player will total the sums for the five rounds using the space provided the student who's closest to 500 is the winner all right so what you can do if you're playing by yourself if i were playing by myself i can keep going and by the end see what my total is I'm hoping it's gonna be close to 500, but that might be a little over, it might be a little under. Now if I play this again, and I can just use another sheet of paper, like lined paper, and continue these um, addition problems, I can see if my the next um, game that I play, after I put all these cards back down and play again, would, I, would my total land up being more or less or closer to 500 than it was the first game? So it's a way that you can sort of play against yourself if you wanna play this game over and over again. And you have some space at the bottom to put your work. All right, have fun. This is a really fun game. Enjoy it, bye.